Hey guys, Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys some tricks and tips for elementary OS 6 Odin. So let's get started. Now, a couple of days ago, Elementary OS just released their latest operating system, which is Elementary OS 6.0 Odin. And it's been a long time coming. They've actually been in development for almost a thousand days. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you know that I've used Elementary OS actually specifically on this laptop before. And then I switched over to Ubuntu 20.04. And now I am officially switching back to Elementary OS 6. And here are some of the tricks and tips that I will be showing you guys. Now, if you guys are interested in the actual updates on what they did and new features that they added. Uh, there's a lot of channels that are doing that right now. I actually recommend the Linux experiment. He's done a great review on all the add-ons and features that were brought on to elementary OS 6.0. So go check him out. But for now, I will be showing you some of the things that I will be adding to this operating system because I am actually going to be using this full time. Now, what I'm going to be showing you today is a couple of tricks and tips that I will be installing and adding to my elementary 6.0 to make it a little bit more usable than what it comes from stock and fix a little bit of the issues that comes along with this operating system as well. So here we have the elementary OS 6.0 desktop. I do really like how they kept everything like it was before. Nothing much has changed. Um, I mean, again, I did add a lot of applications. I spent a good three to four hours installing DaVinci Resolve, a couple of other things, Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, like everything that I would probably use on this operating system because this is gonna be my full-time computer. One of the things that I did wanted to uh, mention is that, again, still no system tray. You will have to add this in. I'm glad the guy who originally created the system tray, he has updated his script and now you could get it back on the new Odin operating system. So I'm gonna open up the browser and again, everything will be linked down in the description below. Here is the new wing panel indicator and you could just follow his quick instructions literally is copying and pasting this and then well for Odin you would need to use this one so you would grab this and then grab this then grab the dev file right over here which is for Odin and this is what you would use to install it now to activate it it's also over here this will tell you like you have to make a file put it in the auto start and then modify the file to add the word Pantheon at the end of it. So I did all that and this is how I got this little system indicator. And without it, you won't even see the Steam icon. It'll just be nothing there. And like, you can't even tell, like certain applications, I don't know why they don't add it in because Steam is one of those things where you need this to exit Steam. If I was just to close out of Steam, it just leaves the icon right up here. And there's a few other applications that I rely on this little system tray like Remina. So if I use Remina, Again, I need that system tray. Obviously the icon's not there right now, but if I was to close this, it's still running in the background. The only way to close it is to quit it like that. But besides that, moving on, next up we have Pantheon Tweaks or Elementary Tweaks. That's what we used to call it, but now they call it Pantheon Tweaks. This website will actually show you how to install everything, which is about three commands. Uh, you first install software commons, and then you would copy this list into your terminal update it, and then install Pantheon Tweaks. And once you're done with that, it will show up in your settings. So if you go over to settings, now you have a tweak icon and you could change whatever you want, especially adding the minimize button back because that's something I use a lot. I mean, you can just like click on it and it'll minimize. I, I have a muscle memory to pressing the minimize button on the top right instead of looking on the task bar in the bottom. If you're a Mac user, you'll, you'll, you'll probably be used to that setup. But otherwise, uh, I did bring back the tweaks and you can modify the appearance. You could change how the windows would be like. So you could add whatever you want right here. So I just left it as add minimize to write. Next up, because Odin does not have any um, task manager itself, I decided to go with GNOME usage. So to do that, you just have to type in sudo app install GNOME usage. And I think this works with the theme very well. Usage is a newer program. Uh, other than their system task manager that makes it look like this. I like that if you click on memory, it'll slide down, show you the RAM and the swap and the processes that are running and you can force quit them. You, it shows you your processor. Storage has a little cool thing where it shows you little details about your storage and stuff like that. So I do recommend using GNOME usage and it gives you this little cool thing and it matches with the whole theme of elementary OS. So yeah, I do recommend using this one. Uh, next up, because Here's the thing, they made this more laptop friendly, so they added gestures. So if I like move the mouse with three fingers up or down, it'll actually give me like stuff like this, right? Here's the thing, they never tuned the operating system for laptops. 
Uh, it's a weird thing. What I mean is like, there's no laptop tools where it'll actually help you save battery. So the first thing I would install is either TLP. It's to help prolong the battery life. It'll lower the clock if it needs to. It'll do a lot of stuff just to prolong the battery life, turn off USBs, Bluetooth, et cetera, et cetera. If you wanna be in control with more options instead of just using TLP and a text file, I would recommend laptop mode tools. Now I'm currently using laptop mode tools just to show you guys. TLP doesn't have like a GUI, so you would have to modify a config file, but in laptop mode tools, which is very similar, you will get a GUI where you're able to control the aspects of things that you wanna run or turn off. Like this device doesn't, I don't have any PCI devices connected to this. Like I could turn that off. Those are the things I'm talking about. So here are all the menus that you could do like hot plugging, uh, LCD brightness, uh, disable video output, enable Bluetooth or disable Bluetooth. These are all the things that you could check off and save in your configurations to help prolong the life of your battery. I would either recommend using laptop mode tools or either TLP, either one works with you, that's fine. Now talking about Bluetooth, here's another thing that you might or might not know. For some reason, when you first install this operating system onto any laptop that has Bluetooth, it is blocked. You cannot use Bluetooth unless you unblock it. So to check that you would use the RF kill and then list. This will actually show you what's going on with that. Now in the Bluetooth area, this would actually say soft block, yes. And you have to disable that by using RF kill unblock Bluetooth, just like that. And that will unlock it and then your Bluetooth will start working. I had the same problem with the previous versions of elementary OS. So check it out if you're having issues with Bluetooth. So that's another fix that I had to do. Now, next up, another fix. Suspend has an issue. Every time when it tries to suspend, it'll actually still keep my screen on, even though it looks like it's suspended. And I have a little preview right here where you can still see like the NVIDIA icon or something like that. It's weird. It doesn't want to go to sleep or suspend. I found out what's wrong with it and you're missing a utility called PMUtils. So you do sudo app install PMUtils, like just like that. And that will fix the suspend issue. So you need this little software just so your computer go back to sleep. And yeah, that works perfectly fine. It doesn't have hibernate, so you only have suspend, but this works just as well. And you just need to get this uh, utility installed. Last but not least, this is just for user preference because it's a laptop and I usually carry USB disks around. Um, I would actually install GNOME disk utility and this will give you uh, this guy right here. This is a GNOME disk utility that allows you to format, configure disks, or if you have USBs and stuff like that. It doesn't have this software pre-built in, so you would have to install it yourself. And to install that, it's sudo app install GNOME disk utilities. And that's, the, that's what's gonna give you that software. Now, as a bonus, I do use WireGuard a lot for a lot of my VPN connections now. And there is no clean way to install it. Like it's not in GNOME, you can't just do uh, network manager install WireGuard, you know, for network manager. Like what I mean is that if you go into network settings and you go into your VPN, it's not in here. I ended up being able to add this by compiling something. So now I do have the WireGuard just to make it as clean as possible. And I've been using this on my Ubuntu installs. So I'm gonna leave this link down in the description below. As long as you follow this guy on how to compile it, it'll actually give you that menu of WireGuard and all the menus behind that to get everything connected. So this is a very good utility to have if you are running GNOME or Ubuntu. Quick talk about the operating system right now. I do love the fact that you can actually right click and take screenshots of any windows. That's one of my favorite features. Uh, also, I, you still see there's a little bit of bugginess. This was actually in the beta as well when I was testing it. It stays there, the, the window. I don't know why it does that. But besides that, uh, my favorite thing, which is picture and picture is back. That was one of the, my favorite things about this operating system that I would use a lot. I would be doing something in the background and throwing picture in picture. And especially if you have it on laptop where you only have one screen, that picture in picture will save you a lot. Those are two of my most favorite features. And now uh, another thing is that you could actually change over to your um, accent colors. So if I wanted to change this, you see how this is a little bit of a teal. I change that to blue, or I could change that to orange or pink. Yeah, it's, it's really nice that you could change accent colors and stuff like that. So those are the features I do like about it. They do have a better notification center. I did notice that as well. 
and they did put more gestures in for laptops like three finger swipe swipe left or swipe right even in the notifications i could swipe that with two fingers and that will swipe away so i they added a lot of gestures for laptop mode it's just the weirdest thing why they don't have all these tlp or laptop mode tools and to optimize it for laptop battery i don't know why they didn't do that yet that is it for tricks and tips for elementary os 6. if you have any questions please hit it down in the comments below if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts